you know as we look around we can see that prophecy is truly unfolding and some people would say it's all doom and gloom but I came across Dr. Sam who's one of the top cardiologists in the US and he is a breath of fresh air and he gives a real warning on what we say the imminent rapture not only that he gives in more but his enthusiasm about Christ and who Christ is is actually very tangible and this to me was truly um, a breath of fresh air because we are seeing things coming um, to a crescendo things are hitting a climax and he kind of phrases this up in this short video um, amazingly of the times that we're living in and how we should be living what I'd ask you to do is to watch it in its full to get the full context and um, but also smash the like button so someone who doesn't know Christ may come to the understanding of who he truly is and the promises he has for their life also and um, remember watch it in full and you will be truly blessed and um, thanks again for all your prayers I'm back from the hospital it was only infection Thanks to God that all is well. Have a look at this and I'll see you at the very end with a word of encouragement. Do you believe in the rapture? Do you believe in the second coming? And if so, what condition does our heart need to be in in order to... I definitely believe in the rapture. I definitely believe in the second coming uh, because I believe in the word of God and I believe the word of God is infallible uh, and it's unbreakable and you can burn it, you can bury it, you can ban it. But the word of God lives, you know, the, the, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord will remain forever and eternally. And that's according to Isaiah 4, verse 8. So the word of God is just beautiful. So what what is the difference between the rapture? Uh, we're in the end times. How do you know that? Because, you know, you can go to prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 38, 39. You can see that Russia, Turkey, Iran are going to get together. And, and, and if you look also at the book of Psalms, it'll tell you that they're going to join with Syria. They're going to join with Saudi Arabia. They're going to join with Egypt and they're going to attack Israel. And you're like, that ain't never going to happen. In fact, when Ezekiel wrote that Russia was going to attack Israel, Russia didn't even exist. That's the strength of prophecy. That's how good our Bible is. And today, Russia, Turkey, Iran are aligned. They are allies and they're in Syria at the Golan Heights, ready to jump all over Israel. It's already happening and it's, it's in plain sight. So if you don't believe it, then you got to go to prophecy and go, Ooh, ain't nobody predicted that. Nobody came up with that. This was prophesied 2,500 years ago through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that, that's going to happen right after the rapture. So where is what is the rapture? Jesus talked about it in John 14, 1 through 3. Don't let your hearts, ooh, there goes the heart. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And he's saying this right before he's being crucified, y'all. I mean, look at how Jesus is. He ain't worried about himself. He's worried about you and me. That's why he's the only God. That's why he's the savior of the world, because he came down every other religion. You got to climb up to a God, but he came down because he's humble and he's obedient and he loves you like crazy. No matter what you've done, he's in love with you. And so he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions and I go prepare a place for you. And when I come to take you with me, bam, that's the rapture. And then you find the rapture in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, where it says, in the blink of an eye, those who are dead in Christ, we just buried my daddy. I love my daddy. He was such a great man of God. And he taught me how to love God and love, love people. And he taught me all these, uh, how to love the scriptures and how to love Jesus Christ. And so uh, in 1551, the dead in Christ, my daddy who's buried his body, maybe in the grave, but his soul and spirit is in heaven. And so the, when the rapture occurs, his body is going to be glorified in a split, split atomic second, and it will join his spirit and soul. We who are alive, oh, I wish it happened right now. We'd be disappeared right now. We're going to go through the ceiling, through the roof, and everybody's concerned about getting a concussion and needing a neurosurgeon. There ain't no excedrin in heaven, y'all. So we're going to get glorified bodies, and our bodies are going to change. We're going to go through the ceiling, through the roof, and we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And that's the rapture. We go through the Bema seed after that seven years of beauty in heaven. And, and then there's a marriage of oh, the marriage of the lamb. Uh, and then there's the supper of the lamb. Y'all can eat what you want. And they know cardiology going to check your cholesterol. So it's going to be good up there, y'all. And so, but down here, hell on earth seven year worth of tribulation and the only way to get your toilet paper and to get your water bottle is to get the 666 you're gonna have to get it on your forehead and you're gonna have to get it on your right hand one or the other and look at if y'all come to my office today what what do we make patients do today 
We make them stick their forehead out and we check their temperature. I'm telling you, people are getting conditioned to stick their forehead out so people can check their temperatures. But one day it's going to be checking the 666. The 666 don't come out today. It comes out in the tribulation. It comes out in the middle of the tribulation. There's going to be chaos, volcanoes, tsunamis, uh, hail going to come down from heavens, uh, fire from the heavens. You're, there's going to be uh, there's going to be true for the first time global warming, y'all. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The sun is going to scorch people. The, it's global warming ain't today. Global warming will occur during the tribulation, and it's going to be scorching people. I mean, there's going to be darkness. There's going to be disasters. Uh, it's going to be bloody and half of the world's population that today would be four million out of eight will die during half of the tribulation and then it's going to even get worse you to, to, to survive you need the 666 if you take the 666 you're going straight to hell because there's no redemption when you take the that's selling your soul to satan if you take the 666 so after that seven years the second coming will be jesus christ comes down with his bride on a white horse that man don't come with a donkey no more, y'all. He ain't all humble. He's like got fire in his eyes, a sword in his mouth, and it's on. Let's go. Jesus Christ is coming back in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And he's coming back. And we're coming with the saints of God come to him. And all these world powers will come so that they, they can take down Jesus Christ. And Jesus with a word. He's like, bam, you're gone. And he's going to take them all down. There will be no more world government. Jesus will rule uh, a, a thousand years in the millennium. And the earth is going to change. The lions, they ain't going to roar no more. The snakes, they don't bite no more. People will live to be a thousand years old. And that's the people who barely make it through the tribulation and give their hearts to Christ. We, the glorified body, we can't make no mistakes. We, we're glorified. After that comes the great white throne. Mm, mm, mm. Great white throne where all the dead that did not want Jesus Christ, that rejected him, that hated God, or even were just good. They were just good, but they didn't want God. They'll rise with their eternal bodies and they'll come to the great white throne and they will meet the Lord, their maker, their savior. And, and he will open up the books. And if you're not in the book of life, then you're gonna, your ticket is to, to go to hell. And God doesn't send people to hell. People chose to go to hell. People rejected God. People rejected their maker. People rejected their creator. People rejected their redeemer. And they go to hell. It's tragic. I don't say that with glee. I say that with my heart wrenching, uh, with pain. And I don't want nobody to go to hell. That's why I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to give them love, to give them hope, to give them Jesus give them eternal life and then us will be with him forever and ever in eternity and they're going it's not going to be TGIF thank God it's Friday it's TGIH thank God it's heaven it's going to be fun we're going to go from universe to universe our taste buds are going to burst we're going to be joyful the heart's going to be like oh I'm so happy I'm with Jesus and ain't no sorrow ain't no death ain't no trouble ain't no taxes Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, y'all. It's going to be good. I want you to be with me. And all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I didn't know I was a sinner. But this crazy cardiologist from California, he's talking about me being a sinner. And he's talking about uh, Lord Jesus. And oh, okay, well, the Lord Jesus came to die on the cross for you because he loves you. And he will take away all your sins. And he will wash you clean. And you will be his son, his daughter. And, and when it all comes down to death, don't y'all worry. The body's going to sleep. Your spirit and soul go straight to heaven. But without Jesus Christ, mm -mm. it's going to be a place called Hades until the rapture, uh, the second rapture, the resurrection uh, to the great white throne, and then it's uh, to, to hell. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Ain't nobody coming to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, y'all. Why is he the way? Because he's the one that died for you. He's the one that cares for you. He's the one that's the true living God. All of the gods, they're dead. Jesus is alive. So what would you say to those who are like, wow, that sounds great. Okay, it's going to be a rapture. You're going to have great taste buds. You're going to live with Jesus and all this stuff. But what if they're like, well, I'll have a second chance. During the tribulation, How? what would you say to them? Would you say, uh-huh. Yes, there, there is. I'm sorry. There is a second chance. That's very true because there's going to be 144,000, according to Revelation 7 and Revelation 14. Uh, there's going to be 144,000 Jewish evangelists like little Paul's 
or big Pauls running around and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And people are going to come to Christ at that time. But, you know, the price will be to be beheaded and the price will be to go in hunger and the price will be to be uh, 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 turning on your faucet and seeing blood come out of the faucet. It's not a pretty scene. And if you ain't coming to Christ now, Mm, it's going to be very difficult to say, I ran out of toilet paper and I ran out of water and I don't have my gummy bears. And what am I going to do with my own self? I better go get myself the 666 so I can get all these things. Mm, it's not going to be easy. It is today. Today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day. And, and that's made specifically clear in our Bible, not tomorrow. And the more you listen to the word of God, the more we hear the word of God, the more we say, it ain't time for me to come to the word of God, the harder the heart gets. The heart becomes like a stone. And that's what we got to, you know, that's what you got to look at in, in um, uh, it's in Jeremiah 11, 11, 19, Jeremiah 11, 19, that God will take away the heart of stone. Don't, don't, don't let him give you a heart of flesh, a heart of flesh that comes to him, that loves him, that accepts him. Uh, let that heart of stone as you're talking, let the word of God break that heart of stone and, and accept, his, accept his blood so you can have a heart of flesh, a heart of goodness, a, a heart that's, that wants to love him and come to him today. Because the, the, the further you go from the word, the harder the heart becomes and the harder it becomes to come to Christ. Amen. Amen. So today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow and not after the rapture today. Yes. Today. Okay. So about this vaccine that's going out, do you think that this is a condition for the market of beefs? Do you think we're being conditioned for that? Do you think it's a precursor or do you think it's just, Hey, some just vaccine floating around? What's your, what's your opinion on that? I think a lot of people think, you know, I have people calling me and asking me if the chip 666 is in the vaccine and so the the vaccine can't have the 666 it can't be implemented into it because the the 666 does not come out until the mid tribulation it's not even at the beginning of the tribulation so the tribulation is seven years and at three and a half years that's when satan really exposes himself and and blasphemes god goes into the temple of god and says i'm god and then the the false prophet comes out and makes people bow down to the antichrist and satan and then they implement the 666 so i don't believe the vaccine has the 666 I don't believe the vaccine is, at this point is mandatory. Nobody is made to take the vaccine. But at that time, you're really, uh, uh, you're really made to take the 666 just to survive. So today, what I, uh, what I see more is a breakdown of society. And it's not a matter of black and white. It's not a matter of brown or yellow. It's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of rejecting Jesus or accepting Jesus. It's, it's, there's only two kinds of people. It's not male, female, black, white. It's not Hispanic or Russian. It's a believer or an unbeliever, period. That's, that's, the, that's the only difference in people. Either you believe in Christ or you don't believe in Christ. And so the, that's the most important issue in life right now. It's not whether the vaccine is a precursor. It's are you a believer or are you an unbeliever? Because the vaccine is not going to make you or break you. The vaccine is not going to send you to heaven or hell. But the fact that you're a believer or unbeliever, that's going to set your eternity. So vaccine doesn't set your eternity. You being a believer sets you for eternal life. And you being an unbeliever sets you for eternal hell. You make the choice. And that's a good answer. Very good answer. Now, you wrote a book called, well, I'm sorry, you have a series of books. You've written a lot of books. Your most recent is Rev It Up Verse by Verse. And I mean, I, there's some powerful stuff in here. I just would like to read two of them. The yes. first is, if one chooses to bow to Christ today during the church age, it is done in devotion and admiration. If one refuses to bow today, he will likely bow the knee to the Antichrist during the tribulation. Anyone who bows the knee to the Antichrist will also bow before Jesus Christ after the millennium at the great white throne judgment. Could you just elaborate on that? I know what it means, but viewers may not know what that means. I think it's powerful. Amen. So uh, God has sent his son, only son, and this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his only son 
as a propitiation or atonement or uh, atonement for our sin. He bought us out of the slave market. So if you want to be bought out of sin, just like I open up heart arteries and, and there's a clot there, a blockage there, and the heart's going to die because the blood flow is not coming to the heart. So too, we were born in sin. And, and our spirits are dying. And the only way to open up the spirit is not through Netflix or Hulu or entertainment or going to church or being a Baptist or being a, a, a evangelical or being a Pentecostal. That don't get you nowhere. But the only way to open up the, that spirit artery that's full of sin and, and destruction is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that blood, if you accept it, your spirit lives. And that's bowing down to the cross. Jesus was obedient to the point of death. And he wants us to be obedient as children to come to him as our papa and to say, I messed up. And that takes humility because the pride says, I ain't messed up. I'm my own God. What you talking? I am. And I will be. No, you ain't. And no, you will not be. Because you just look at yourself in the mirror when you wake up or you do your business in the bathroom and you stink, you ain't all that. So uh, get yourself put all together and figure out that you ain't God and, and you're, you are not the God within you. That, that's not who you are. But the God of the heavens, your creator and the redeemer will come into your heart and your soul and your spirit and transform you completely. And that's bowing down to him now. But if you don't bow down now, if you decide, nah, that ain't for me, there comes the rapture where Christ will take the, those who love him, those who walk with him home, and you'll be left behind. And you'll be left behind, and it's not going to be pretty because it's going to be one world government. You will have to bow the knee to the government. You will have to take the 666 if you want to survive. And once you do, you'll, that's a, ir, irredeemable. Mark my words. It's an irredeemable. You will not go to heaven ever. Um, or or you, you'll bow down to the Antichrist because you're like, I, I want to survive. I want to survive. And it's all about me, me, me in this world. I want to survive. I want to survive. So you take the 666 and then you die. And that's only a seven year period of tribulation. And then after the millennium, a thousand years, the wicked or the good, either way, that didn't want Christ will come and be raptured or resurrected, that's called the second resurrection, because the first resurrection is the one, the rapture for the Christians, for those who love him. The second resurrection is a 1,700 years later, where the wicked or the good who didn't want Christ are raised up, come to the great white throne of God, and they bow the knee to Christ then, but it's too late. It's, so are it's you saying up. that good people go to hell? There's going to be a lot of good people in hell. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell, people who did not murder, people who are kind to their neighbors, people who gave their, little, the, their milk to the neighbor because the, the, the neighbor was in need, people who stopped by the road and changed the tire for somebody, people who gave to charity, people who wrote a million dollar check to a building, people who build the building in their names. There's going to be a lot of good people that, 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 that feed people, that help people, that give to people. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell because they didn't want Jesus Christ. Because he not by the words. Way. He's the truth. He's the life. Jesus is the way. If you got any other way, you in the wrong way. He is the, he's the truth. If you got any other truth, then you got a lie. And he is the life. You got any other life, then you got death. Jesus is the way. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. And if you don't got Jesus then you don't got life and you don't got truth and you don't got way. And that's why a lot of good people are going to go to hell. Amen. It's really sad, but it's true. And this, that's a gospel that's not really preached in churches uh, anymore nowadays. But I'm really glad you brought that up. I have one more um, excerpt from your book. Uh, this is from page 168. It says, The rapture will be in a sequential order, such as a carpool, where people are not all picked up at the same time, but all will arrive at the same destination. Could you just explain that to those who may not understand? Because I think it's really powerful. I think it's a great analogy. Sure. Well, the first one that was raptured is Jesus Christ. Uh, he, he got his glorified body. And that we find that in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, because he is the first fruits of the resurrection. He rose first. He resurrected first. And he got his resurrected glorified body first. 
and then the 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 next peoples that are on the way uh it would be us the the churchgoers and i really i want to be very careful when i say that because you put on a little tie and you put on makeup and you wear a pretty dress and you got your pretty shoes uh, and you got nice looking shoes and you go to church and you all like praise the lord and that don't get you to heaven okay that don't get you in the rapture your heart and soul, or my heart and soul has got to be sold out for Jesus Christ. We got to be washed in the blood of the lamb to get to go to the rapture. And so we got to be in his word to love him, to honor him, to give to him. And, and when he comes in your heart, you're ready, set, go. So the rapture happens next. And it's about the next thing on the prophetic calendar to happen. So that's the second this is the carpool now. This is the second peoples who get to go to heaven. Jesus first. Now comes, he's the first fruit. Now comes those, the, those who love him and those he loves. And we get to go up to heaven. So that's the second uh, rapture or the second people who get to go in the carpool. What's the next one? You know, there'll be, uh, we didn't talk about this, but in Revelation chapter 11, there'll be two prophets that come. And, and I believe uh, that that's Moses and Elijah. We don't have time to get into it now. The book, oh, let me show y'all the book. This is Rev It Up, y'all. Rev It Up, verse by verse. And this is only chapters 1 through 11. Um, and then this is, this is Rev It Up. This is volume 2. This is, chapters, um, this is chapters 12 to 22. And, you know, it's very different. It's very different because it's got little hearts in it. Uh, and the little heart says, oh, this is the author's favorite. And it breaks, you know, uh, you reading everything and you're like, wow, that's cool. It's got little medicine sign in it that caduces where I take medicine and cardiology and apply it to Book of Revelation, which makes it a lot of fun. And then I got a geopolitical section. Geopolitical would say, you're not only talking about Revelation that was talk, written 2,000 years ago. Maybe it'll have, I'm talking about Russia and China and the U.S. and uh, Iran and Iraq. I'm talking we're talking about now. So I tie it all in together. So the people are like, wow, I get it. I finally get it. It's so cool. So, uh, the, so we were talking about the rapture. Then, then comes the two prophets. Um, and I believe it's Moses and Elijah. And, you know, people argue about that. I don't care to argue. So if somebody else, who cares? It's the prophets and it's, it's people who are speaking the word of God. That's what's important. Their message is important. Not really the messenger, the message. And so the message is the word of God. And they will die uh, because the Antichrist will kill them. And they will resurrect uh, after three days. And that's another form of the rapture. The, the 144 people, uh, the, the Jewish prophets uh, and uh, the evangelists will be preaching. They'll be resurrected up. That's another part of the rapture. The people who are in the tribulation who are like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm not taking your 666. I'm coming to Christ. I should have come before. I didn't. But now I know he's real. And I want the real deal. And they come to Christ, they'll get beheaded. Uh, um, their spirit and soul goes up to, to heaven, but their bodies will remain down here after the second coming. They will be raised up. Uh, and so it's a sequential time of people. And, and there's an argument about when the Old Testament saints um, will, um, or, or the Old Testament saints will be raptured. It's within that seven year period. So all are coming to Christ, all are going to be raptured. It's just that people take their turn going up, but ultimately those who love Christ, those who love God are all going to be with him. And we're all going to be, that's the first rapture or the first resurrection. That's a good thing. The second rapture or the second resurrection is a bad thing. That's for the ungodly, those who didn't want God, they'll come up after a thousand, seven years after the millennium and the tribulation, and they'll get their eternal bodies and then um, they'll be uh, sentenced to death because they weren't written in the book of life. Let me ask you this. Is your name written in the book of life? The only way to get in the book of life, it ain't is because you're pretty. It ain't is because you got money. It ain't is because you got a degree. It ain't because you're all that. It's the only way to get in the book of life is to be washed underneath the blood of the lamb. Are you washed underneath the blood of the lamb? I hope you are. And if you're not just it's so simple. It's, it's so simple. Jesus said, uh, all you have to do is to, is to believe in him. But you understand Satan believes in him. Uh, he ain't going to heaven. To believe in him is to trust him, to love him, to seek him, and to give your heart to him. And all you got to do is believe in Christ and he shall be saved. Amen. And this is why I wanted to have you on, because you are a true deep believer. I know I told you this before, but you are a true deep believer where it's all or nothing, God or nothing. And and there's no boundaries with God. There's, there's no sugarcoating with God. 
um, it's the real deal. It's not religion. It's all relationship. It's all, you know, um, inspiration from the, from the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. And I, there's a lot of people listening right now who are like, okay, this is a really powerful, deep conversation. I'm thinking about giving my life to Jesus, but how do I do it? Could you just explain that? Because time is short and people are beginning to realize, okay, Revelation is kind of accurate. You know, things are coming to pass the way the Bible says. Maybe the Bible is legit. So if you could just lead people to Jesus, and then I'll have you pray. Amen. So it, it says in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts. Ooh, there goes the heart again. If believe in our hearts that, that God raised him from the dead on the third day, then, then we are saved. And it's that simple. So uh, it's, it's a matter of, you know, the jailer, Paul was in jail and there was an earthquake and the jailer was about to kill himself because how can this be? Everybody's going to escape. And Paul's like, chill. We all here. Don't, don't, don't harm yourself. And, and he's like, wow, you got the real God. I mean, he did all this and y'all stayed here and y'all didn't run away after you were beat up and placed in shackles. And he goes, what must I do to be saved? And, and Paul gave him a simple answer. You must believe in God and you will be saved. And so it's, and people make it so difficult. People make it like, okay, I got to do this. I got to, you ain't got to do nothing. In fact, if you did, and if I did, we mess up. God already did. He sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, shall not perish or go to eternal hell, should not perish, but have everlasting life or will go to heaven. So that's how simple it is. It's to come to say, one, I'm not all that. And I'm a sinner. I, I, I guess I was born in sin. Yeah, that's true. So I'm a sinner. That's one acknowledgement. The second acknowledgement is the only way I can get out of this is not through my works, but it's through the beautiful work, the complete work of Jesus Christ. That's why he said on the cross, it is finished. He did what he had to do. And, and the, the third thing is to start speaking with the mouth and saying, okay, now I acknowledge it. I know who can save me. Now I'm going to say it. Uh, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I come to you and I, I want you to cleanse me of all my sins. And that's it. That's how simple it gets. And then you're like, well, what do I do after that? The Holy Spirit will come into you. He will teach you all things and he will get, bring to remembrance what God has taught you according to John 14, 26. So that's the beauty of walking with Christ, that he will walk with you, run with you, teach you, uh, give you new wings that you may soar. Uh, and there ain't nobody else that's going to do no family, no doctor, no lawyer, no accountant, no teacher, no nobody. Only Jesus, only Jesus can lift you up. Amen. Now, could you pray for our viewers? I sure will. Thank you. Uh, Father God, I, I want to thank you for your love, your mercy, your goodness, your grace. I, I, I just, I bow before you um, knowing that I'm unworthy, but your blood has made me worthy. Uh, that I, I want to join the, the angels in Isaiah 6 that constantly are saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I want to join the, the angels, the cherubim in Revelation 4 that, that say the same thing. They're holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All honor and praise belong to our God. You're worthy. You're a good God. You send your only son to die for us. Who, who would do that? Who, who would give up everything? Who would give up heaven, glorious heaven, to come to earth, to come to a little manger and stable in Bethlehem? Who would do that? Who would ride on a donkey? Who would get on the cross? Who would take the 39 stripes on the back for us? Nobody but you. And even if a man did all that, uh, take the stripes, go on the cross, he couldn't save us. Only Jesus could save us because your blood is pure. Your blood is clean. You are God and you are the lover of our souls. And Father, uh, those who are listening now and who will listen ultimately, Father, uh, the, uh, please let them know that you're in love with them. You're not mad at them, that you think highly of them, that they're your kids. They, it doesn't matter if they're black or white or Hispanic or Russian or German. It doesn't matter, Father. It doesn't matter if they're male, male or or female. It doesn't matter if they're rich or pure or poor. It doesn't matter if they're educated, uneducated. It just matters that you love them and you want, you've you poured your life for them. You've given your all to them. And Father, we thank you for that. And, and those who want to come right now, those who want to just be at your table and say, I want this food. I, I want this goodness. I want this mercy. I, I want this God. I, I've never seen a God like this. I've never heard about a God like this. Father, let them come. Let them bow the knee and say, take me. Uh, do what what you want with me. I, I'm giving my life to you. And Father, it, it, 
come into their souls, cleanse them, and, and Father, heal them. I'm, I'm talking to people right now who've got cancer. I'm, I, we're praying about people who've got neurological problems, uh, GI problems, heart problems, lung problems, uh, uh, all kinds of sickness, Father. Touch them. Touch them in the name. By those stripes, in the name of Jesus, I proclaim right now they're healed. They're just healed. Uh, and let them go to the doctor and say, I, I, I'm healed. Check me out. Do your test. Father, I proclaim that in the name of Jesus. And I proclaim salvation to people who are listening to me who say, right now, right now, I come to Christ and I give my heart to Christ. I thank you, Papa. I thank you because you're a good God. I'll say this. Um, Dr. Sam, to me, that video that, that someone actually sent to me, I've heard it before. I mean, it was a couple of years ago. I could have heard about it and never really watched it. But this really kind of gave me a sense of excitement and love and adoration and um, towards the promises that christ has given us to those that believe in him um, and really a, a, a man of what they call science um, but has a real understanding of scripture and the times that we're living in um, and it's truly a blessing to see stuff like that and i really believe that we're living in that period that time scale and um, that prophecy talks about and uh, the things that would happen as we see the coming or the return of Christ but what I would say to everyone is we should be making an extra effort to make sure we spread the gospel that's what we hear at Prophecy Unfolding our goal is to try kind of raise enough so that we can give to a foundation that can spread the Bibles around to people that are in need the likes of China and other countries that need as much material as possible and you'll see that in the description below but remember regardless of all the chaos that goes on in the world God is always in control Keep the faith.